Good morning, Gospel City Church. How are you? It's good. To, man, y'all are far. Nobody wanted to sit in a splash zone. Eddie. Thank you, Eddie. Listen, I don't know if it's because of me or Chad. I'll, I'll assume Chad, but uh, th- these are available in the future in case you want to come down here. Uh, glad you're here. Uh, welcome. Uh, if you're a guest with us, super pumped you're here. We do want to say to you, we'd love to... Uh, know you were here. We will give you a gift. We we have a, a connect cards, and you you will find them. There's baskets now on the ends uh, of the of the rows, and then there's some in the middle. Uh, if you want to fill that out at any point in the morning, and and turn that into the offering ba- basket box, whatever they are boxes. Uh, as you walk out, you can just drop them in there. We'd love to hear from you. Know you were here. Um, we'd love to give you a gift at our connect area too. Thank you for making the move over here. Obviously, uh, this is different and new, and uh, you know the smell of popcorn is nice, kind of nice. It kind of makes our stomach rumble a bit, but uh, man, it's, it's good to be in here, good to have this space, and just so thankful for it. I, I do want to give you a couple of announcements before we dive into um, just the sermon today. And uh, first one is uh, just continuous reminders, and, and, and anyone can correct me if I'm wrong, because normally... Uh, Jose does this, and they don't tell me details. So they, uh, if I get these wrong, help, help me out. But the Operation Christmas Child is now taking, they're, they're good on the stuff. They're taking donations for the shipping, uh, and you can see Crystal uh, for that. You saw some of our Thanksgiving uh, boxes were being turned in today. I'm guessing today's the deadline, Dawn? Yeah, today's the deadline. If you want to contribute to that or whatever, make sure you get uh, with her. And, uh, and then, um, am I missing anything? No, I think that's it. Oh, the hurricane relief. If you wanted to continue to give towards hurricane relief, we have some people giving towards that. Uh, we're funneling it to uh, Ian. Um, uh, and praise the Lord, we kind of dodged Nicole a bit. And so hopefully there wasn't too much damage from that. I didn't hear much, but um, praise the Lord for that. Uh, I would also ask that we pray uh, for Pastor Jose. He was here this morning, then he had to leave uh, Trinity um, is uh, not feeling well. So we want to we pray for her. I think they're going to take her to the doctor uh, this morning. So we want to pray for them as they've kind of been navigating this with, their, with, with her, okay? Uh, so we're going to pray, and then we're going to dive in, okay? So let, let's, get, let's pray together. Lord, we love you. So thankful for the gathering of your church. And as we kind of talk about what that means this morning, and, and uh, would you just give us great uh, clarity? I pray, Father, just for uh, you to do in us what you want to do. We submit to that. We you know, encourage where we need encouragement, edify where we need edification, to challenge us, convict us where we need conviction. So Lord, have your way in us. Um, by the power of your Holy Spirit, move uh, through the preaching of your word um, to make us more like Jesus. We pray you would do that. Uh, we also pray for Pastor Jose and Heidi and Trinity. We pray, God, that you would be with them, that you would heal um, and uh, that you would just give them the peace that comes from Christ and uh, uh, as they're navigating these things, Lord. We love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Now, we are talking about, it's no secret I'm a Tennessee fan. You guys know that. I'm from Tennessee. I'm, it's my alma mater. I, I went to college in, at the University of Tennessee. And so, yeah, yeah, go Vols. Yes, Amen. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and so it's obviously I, I'm, I'm all in on it. Like I, I'll wear the t-shirt, I'll watch games, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, you know, I'll, you know, help the Kentucky fans and pat them on the back, you know, right. 
<laughs> uh, you, you know, well, I'm all in. My son, my son, I, my, my kids, I got them Tennessee shirts. My, my son can play Rocky Top on the piano, you know. Like, we're all in, right? I'm watching the games, basketball, whatever. I, I love it. I, I, I really enjoy it. Um, and I went to school there. They got a lot of my money when I was in college, right? All of my money when I was in college. And uh, they, they got all of that. And, and so uh, I'm, I'm connected in some ways. However, um, you know, when they're playing a game, it's so funny the terminology we use for the teams we like, right? Because when, when, when even talking this morning with some folks, it was like, well, we played a good game yesterday. <laughs> well, I didn't play a good game yesterday. I sat on my butt watching the game being played, right? I'm like, ah, give me another Coke, you know, right? Uh, but we say, oh, we didn't do so well, or we, we're, we're, you know, we're not doing good this year, or, you know. But in reality, if you were to look up the roster for the Tennessee football team, you're not going to find my name on it. I'm not on the team, right? Uh, and if, if I was to come to that team and be like, hey, guys, you know, we're doing great, they'd be like, who are you? Like, you you don't have any part or play here. You're just a you're just a fan, and fans do what fans do. They sit on the outside, they cheer, uh, they pay money to go to games or whatever. Uh, they they do what fans do, but, uh, but but I'm not on the team, right? And so there's a difference between being an outsider looking in and being someone that's on the team, and uh, and, and that's very similar to membership of a church in a lot of ways, because especially in our kind of day and age, it's very um, easy to just kind of be a fan. You know, kind of sit on the outsides, go to a game, uh, pay for an event, go to that event, wear the t-shirt, but not really be a part of the team. And if we're looking up rosters, right, your name's not on the roster of, uh, of a church or uh, of a team. And, and I, what I want to do this morning, what my hope is to do this morning is to explain to us from the Bible, um, the, the benefits and the beauty uh, and, and the, 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 the legitimacy of church membership. Uh, I want to talk about why it's important. Uh, why, why, do, why do we do it? What's, what, you know, what's significant about it? How do, what's it good for you? How's it good for the church? Those kinds of things. And then specifically, briefly, talk through what it's going to look like for us as Gospel City Church. Obviously, again, if you're a guest here, we're, 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 just, we're just getting the, the, the wheels off the runway here. Uh, we started, we launched the church mid-September, and we're, we're ramping up and, and going. And so we're working through, um, you know, what does it mean to be a member of this church? And so these three weeks, we'll be kind of talking talking through this week the importance of membership. Next week, we'll be talking about uh, what are the, the core principles of Gospel City Church. Like, what, what, what are you signing up for? What is this place? Uh, and, and then, you know, how do we do that? And so we're going to be walking through that in the next three weeks. And so I hope you'll continue to come. We're also recording this for those that might, might, might miss it so that they can kind of catch up and, and go along with us. And so, uh, but, you know, church membership is a weird thing for some people, right? Because you might be a member at a gym, right? And if you've ever been a member at a gym like I was ever a member at a gym, it's basically like I pay my money for other people to go work out. That's, that's kind of what I did. And finally, I just realized I'm giving up on this. You know, it's not kind of the, 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 the membership that I want. Or, or maybe you're part of a country club or, or you pay dues or you get certain benefits and you're kind of weighing out like, all right, what's the, what do I have to give to get what I want from this club or membership or, or whatever? The church is, is different than that. It's a team. It's, a, it's, it's really um, a, a more than you... you Hey, I'm signing up. I'm being a part of this. I get benefits. They get my money. Whatever the thing is, and uh, but it's greater than that. There are there are spiritual aspects involved. There's growth aspects involved, and that's what we want to talk about. And I want to start with a quote when we're talking about this. You know, what is membership? Jonathan Lehman uh, uh, says this. He describes membership like this. He says, "Church membership is a declaration of citizenship in Christ's kingdom. It's a passport. It's an announcement made to the." press room of Christ's kingdom. It's the declaration that a professing individual is an official, licensed, card-carrying, bona fide Jesus representative. More concretely, church membership is a formal relationship between the local church and a Christian characterized by the church's affirmation and oversight of the Christian's discipleship and Christian's submission to living out his or her discipleship in the care of the church. 
A church body formally affirms an individual's profession of faith and baptism is credible. It promises to give oversight to that individual's discipleship. And the individual formally submits his or her discipleship to the service and the authority of a body and its leaders. Okay, so essentially, membership, as Lehman says, uh, allows the church to identify who is a part of that, uh, pour into them in the discipleship of their lives to grow in Christ and be more Christ-like with their lives uh, and, and, and allows for that individual to submit to and obey certain scriptures that you can't obey without being a part of a body, to, to, to submit to, to a body and others and leaders and those kinds of things and, uh, and to follow the Lord in, in those ways. Now, obviously, as Christians, we're all kind of a part of the big C church, right? The universal church. You come to Christ, you're a part of the, the, you know, the Christian church family as a whole. That you know, There are people you don't know, you may never know until heaven, uh, all across the nation and across the world that have come to Christ that are part of the family of God, right? They're a part of the big C church. But what I want to make the argument this morning is the importance of the local church and, uh, and why, why it's important. And, and, and I know... There's a million reasons as to why someone might give to not be a part of a local church. I think they're all unfounded biblically. And what I want to do is press in on why um, we can, you know, you're not going to find the word membership in the Bible, right? If you, if you look in your concordance and you're looking for, all right, I want to look for church membership. You're not going to say Paul saying thou shalt be a part of a local church. It's not going to say that. But it's not going to, it's not going to uh, directly tell us to be a part of a, of a local church. However, I think, it imply, I think the Bible implies uh, uh, membership to a local body. So I'm going to go through some scriptures here. And this is more of a topical message. I don't typically do topical messages, but we're, we're kind of in this deal to, to get us launched as a membership. And so, um, so, so I want us to kind of walk through some scriptures so that we can see the importance of this. The first scripture I want to point out is Acts 2.41. And uh, it says, this is, if you remember, this is at Pentecost in Acts 2, and Peter's preaching a message, and 3,000 people come to Christ. Uh, it's, it's the, you know, you know, the Holy Spirit comes down, and it's the, it's the first time that we see, uh, you, you know, Peter preach a sermon and, and people come to Christ. But 41 says, so those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day 3,000 souls. Uh, the reason I want to point this out is I think it's significant and important that, uh, you know, th there was a count here. There, there was, uh, th th there were, they, they, someone counted. Now, I don't know if it's exactly, th maybe 3,001, maybe it was 2,999. I don't know if it's exactly 3,000. You know, sometimes they will round up. Uh, but there was someone making a count here to say, all right, who is in? <laughs> who has come to Christ? And, and it matters, like that matters, you know, and, and, and said, okay, so now we're, we have a, a body, a group of people that of 3,000 people that were added to our number that day. And so, so it's significant to know that, that, that someone is saying, hey, that it, you know, adding people to uh, our group, it's just a very simple statement, but they're, they're taking record of who's coming to Christ and who has not yet come to Christ, right? And so that's significant. And then look at the next few verses, 42 through 47, it says, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the number day by day those who were being saved. Now, you know, this is a text that is, uh, you know, when you talk about church planning, church planners, uh, you know, when you talk about the health of a church, what is a church supposed to look like? They begin to look at this text and, and, and preach this text. But you, one of the things I want to point out in this text is it says that the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings. Um, you, you know, what you see the early church do, 3,000 people come to Christ. One of the most important things that is to think about when you're talking about um, church and what, do I, what kind of church do I want to be a part of uh, namely, what makes a church is, and what makes a good church, a healthy church, is what do they do with the Word of God? 
What does the church do with the word of God? And that, uh, that's significant. And, and so you want to have yourself and your, your family, you know, your, your life submitted under a church that preaches and teaches God's word uh, faithfully and, 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 and honors his word faithfully. So you see that they were devoted to the apostles' teachings. And so they were, they were, they were uh, under a specific set of men. You know, that they were, they were hearing their teachings, learning their teachings, and growing in Christ. And then it says that they devoted themselves to fellowship, breaking of bread, attending the temple, helping one another. Um, the, I don't think they had a membership class in, in, at Pentecost here at the early church, uh, but they were doing the principles that, that a church comes together to do. They were devoted to one another. You know, that, that's, that's a specific group of people doing basically church together with one another. They were, they, they were uh, committed to one another, devoted to one another, one particular body of believers. And one, one last text from Acts, uh, chapter 6, says this, Therefore, brothers, uh, this is when uh, they, they were picking out um, deacons, essentially. And so it says, there, uh, Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven, men's, uh, seven men of good repute, full of the Spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. If you, if you remember, the widows were being neglected in the early church, and they were like, what are we going to do? And the apostle says, hey, uh, we, we, have to be, we have to basically uh, be devoted to the Word of God, teaching the Word of God and prayer, and we need to assign individuals, faithful men, to take care of the task of the church. So they assigned seven, what was kind of the first deacons of the church, to, to meet these needs. Now, what's significant for our intentions this morning is you'll notice that the passage says they picked out from among them. They picked out from among them. They didn't select seven random dudes. Right. It was their body of people together. They had been doing, uh, you know, uh, devoting themselves to one another, devoting themselves to the word of God. They had been they've been committed to learning what, you know, under the apostles teachings. And so so they picked out from among them these seven deacons and uh, to establish them as uh, as their church. And and I could go on and on. I mean, you look at even we just came out of a series where we we saw Jesus directly. Uh, addressing particular churches uh, throughout Asia Minor. And, uh, you know, he, he wrote specific letters to specific churches with specific issues, right? And you'll notice he didn't write the letter to Ephesus to the, letter, to, to the church in Smyrna. He wrote the letter of Ephesus to the church in Ephesus. And so he had specific churches, specific bodies of believers in mind. And so he spoke to them directly on the things they were doing right or the things they were way off on. And so you see uh, th that Jesus himself is directing a letter to a local church. Now, it is applicable for us now uh, in a lot of different ways. We can learn a lot of di different things, but those letters were directed to specific local churches. Same thing with Paul. When he's writing the New Testament, he's, he's writing letters to the church in Thessalonica, right? Or, you know, he, he's writing these letters to specific churches to, to address when he writes to the Corinthians, he's addressing how jacked up the Corinthian church was, right? So he's writing specifically to the Corinthian church. Now, obviously we glean a lot from that. We learn a lot from that. And the scriptures are very applicable to us today, but he was writing to a specific church. Again, emphasizing that the, the local church is biblical. It is implied throughout the Bible that you're a Christian, you're a part of a local body. And you, you really don't see some Lone Ranger Christian out there doing it on their own or trying to figure it out on their own, that they're a part of a body in order to obey certain scriptures. And that's what I want to talk about next. Why should we practice membership? And, uh, you know, because you, you might be wondering, like, this is all well and good, David, but I can, you know, I can follow Jesus on my own. I, I got a Bible. I, I got YouTube. <laughs> I got online church, you know. Uh, you don't have movie theater chairs at your home, though, so you got to come here. Uh, you, you know, you, you, just, you might be thinking, I can do this somewhere else. Why, why, do, I, why do I need this? And that's, that's kind of what I want to talk about because, um, you know, COVID did a lot of things with the church. Uh, I think one of the things it definitely did was made missing church a lot easier. <laughs> You know, and, uh, you know, it just became, you know, oh, man, I can do church in my pajamas. That sounds awesome. I want to do that. And, uh, and even bigger than that, well, now I don't need to be a part of a particular body that knows me because that's vulnerable and that's challenging. I'd rather just hit play and not be known and not really know and call that church or call that worship. And, and I think, 
you, in doing so, you're kind of missing the point, uh, uh, the, the point of what the local church is and is to be. And so that's kind of what I want to talk about. Um, you know, why should, we, why should we do this? Why should I become a member of a, of a church? And I think first, I'm going to point to Hebrews 13, 17. Being a member of a church allows the pastors to know their sheep and the sheep to know their shepherd. Uh, Hebrews 13, 17 says this, Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. Okay, so it starts off, obey your leaders, submit to them. Now, obviously, um, this is predicated on leaders that are worthy of being submitted to. I think that probably needs to be said in our day of of day and age of church, whatever, abuse and different things. Um, however, you, how can you obey this scripture without having particular leaders to submit to? Right? It says, obey your leaders and submit to them. Are you just su- supposed to submit to every leader of any church? Like If you go down the road and you see the pastor of a different church in the community, he says, hey, you shouldn't be doing that. Right? And you're like, Am I supposed to submit to that? Am I supposed to listen to that? How am I supposed to obey that? I mean, you know, so for you to obey this text, it, you have to have particular leaders that you have come under in, in, in submission to. That's, um, you know, uh, 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 having a shepherd. And, uh, you know, obviously Jesus is the, the great shepherd and a pastor would be the under shepherd to Christ. But then, then the, the, the church would come under that shepherding and to be able to, Again, obey and submit uh, to their leaders. So you can't obey that scripture without a local body. Um, also, the, the pastor is going to have a difficult time knowing who he's responsible for if there isn't a particular membership of a church, right? So, it, it, you know, the, the text again says that um, obey your leaders and submit to them for they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will have to give an account. Uh, so... If there is a local body, am I supposed to give an account for every believer in Palm Beach County? Am, am I required to then stand before the Lord and give an account to every believer in, you know, Boynton Beach or this area? No, there's a, there's a particular group of people that I submit to them and they submit to the leadership of the church that, that I will be held accountable for. So those of you who will entrust yourself to Gospel City Church, I will have to stand before the Lord and give an account for how I shepherded, how I taught faithfully the Word of God, how, how I you know, pastored, how, how we led, how we, all, the th- all the things that really matter, you know, like um, j- just your soul, your discipleship, those kinds of things. I'll have to stand before the Lord to give an account. Now, again, that takes a particular group of people that, that I know who I'm going to stand and give an account to. Now, you know, it's, uh, I've been obviously doing ministry for a long time. I've seen people come into a church, sit forever, and never actually join and, and, and never really be a part, but they would, they would call up one particular church their church home. Uh, but no one knows them there. They're not known, and they don't really know who is discipling them. And so how is an individual going to obey their leaders that they don't, they're, they're, they're not with or vice versa? How is a leader going to stand and give an account to the Lord for people they don't know? And so that's why local church is, is important. Local church membership is important because it allows the pastor to care for those uh, who are in his trust. And, uh, and, and that's important. You know, that's what a pastor is called to do. They're not just called um, to make online teaching videos. That's not what a pastor is called to do. He's, he's called to shepherd, uh, to, 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 to care for souls, disciple particular people, uh, to, to point us all towards Christ. And, uh, and, and so, um, so, so, again, membership allows the pastor to know who he's responsible for. Another thing, uh, being a member of a church allows for true biblical community. I want to read to you kind of a lengthy scripture from 1 Corinthians says this, it is actually reported that there is sexual... I told you Corinth, the church in Corinth was messed up. You're going to see some of that. It's actually reported there um, that there is sexual immorality among you and of a kind that is not tolerated even among pagans for a man has his father's wife and you are arrogant. 
Ought you not rather to mourn? Let him who has done this be removed from among you. That's important. For though absent in body, I am present in spirit and, and as if present. I have already pronounced judgment on the one who did such a thing. When you are assembled in the name of the Lord Jesus and my spirit is present with the power of our Lord Jesus, you are to deliver this man to Satan for the destruction of the flesh so that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. Your boasting is not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Cleanse out the old leaven that you may be new, uh, a new lump so, uh, as you really are unleavened. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Let us therefore celebrate the festival, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote to you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral people. Now, again, clue in here. Not at all meaning the sexually immoral of this world or the greedy and swindlers or idolaters. Since then, you would need to go out of the world. But now I'm writing to you not to associate with anyone who bears the name of brother if he is guilty of sexual immorality or greed or is an idolater, reviler, drunkard, or swindler, not even to eat with such a one. For what have I to do with judging outsiders? Is it not those inside the church whom you are to judge? God judges those outside. Purge the evil person from among you. Okay, so notice, especially at the end there, 12 and 13, Paul uses terms like outsider, basically language like outsider and insider kind of language. That there is a church and, and there are particular people that are in it that need to be out of it, <laughs> right? And there are particular people that are out of it that don't need to be treated like they're in it. And so Paul is specifically in addressing this church, noting that there's a differentiation between those that are a part, actually a part of the church that the church affirms as being a part of that church and then, and then the ones that are not affirmed by the church as being a part of that church. And so when we talk about biblical community, what we're saying specifically, and this one is church discipline, like there's, there's um, you know, church discipline is meant for all of our good, Right. All of our good is meant us to lead us to repentance, lead us back to Christ, uh, lead us to be faithful believers, lead us to continue on in the faith, uh, all those kinds of things. That's what it's meant to do, to restore us to, um, our, in our relationship with Christ. You can't do that unless you're a part of a local body, right? Um, you, know, you know, we've seen this, I've seen this a lot in my ministry where you may confront someone on a particular sin and all they'll do is just go to the church down the street, Right? So I'm going to quit going to this church. They don't like me sinning. I'm going to go to this other church where I might be able to get away with sinning. Right? And, and that's, that's, the, that's the difficulty of our day, but it's the beauty of the church that you can trust that if you begin to walk in something that you're yourself even blind to, that maybe the church lovingly will come and put their arms around you to help you walk back according to the way of Christ. And that's a beautiful thing. It's, it's a right and good thing. And you can't really do that unless you're known, right? I mean, you come in, sit in a seat, you leave, you go to lunch, you never engage. You can do that forever, but, but, but what's better for your own soul? What's better for the soul of your children? What's better for the soul of your family? Well, that it would be to, to obey the scriptures, to submit under um, the authority of the church and say, hey, I, I want to I walk in this. And if I were to walk in a, in a way that is contrary to God's word. I want to know that. I want to be brought back in. And uh, that's the beauty of church discipline. But then beyond church discipline is just the, 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 what, what being a member of a church allows us to do. Look, it allows us to love and care for one another. Galatians 6.10 says, So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone. And then look, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. Again, a differentiation for doing, who are doing good to. Do good to everybody, but especially those within your body, within your church. Romans 12, 13 and 16, contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Church membership allows us to be able to do this allows us to be able to love on people uh, that we wouldn't normally know what's going on in their life, right? Um, it's very difficult in our day to know people, 
or get to know people. You know, I think about in my own neighborhood. I come in my neighborhood. I try to meet neighbors, and, you know, they, you, you can see them running from me into their garage. You know, shut that thing, you know. And to be honest, some days that's me. Some days I'm running from them, you know. Uh, but, but it's hard to get to really know people um, in, the, in life, in our neighborhood. Like, how many of them do they really know us? Or we really know them, right? Or how many people in our workplace know us or really know them? See, that's the beauty of the church. So we, we come together we, and to be able to love and encourage one another in such a way that we can let, let our, our guard down and say, hey, these are the things that I struggle with. We you know we talked about when we first planted this church, when we first launched it, it says, you know, it's okay to come in here and not be okay, right? And to admit that, you know, we're not trying to pretend like we've got everything figured out and we're the perfect church and we're the perfect Christian and we wear whatever we wear and no one, everyone thinks we're, we don't have to be like that. But it's also not okay to stay that way. And Jesus wants us to, to grow. And the way we're going to do that is to, to do it together, to be known, to be encouraged by those around us, to be pointed to scriptures by those who knows what, what we're struggling with, to be prayed over by those that love us and know us best, right? Um, being a member of the church also helps us uh, to encourage one another. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching, right? So uh, the local church allows us to come together, and we should be coming into wherever we meet at church, right? We're coming into the movie theater. We should be walking in to theater two and saying, all right, I'm looking specifically to how can I encourage, how can I stir up these people to love and good works? How can I encourage those that I'm going to be worshiping alongside? How can I encourage them further on in the weeks to come? Like to encourage them. We are also to protect one another. Hebrews 12, 15 and 16 says this, See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and by it becomes defiled, that no one is sexually immoral or unholy like Esau, who sold his birthright for a single meal. So, you know, when you're a part of a local church, you're, you're committing to one another. Not just, hey, this is Gospel City Church. I'm coming under this particular pastor, this teaching. That, 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 though those things are important, you're also committing to one another to say, hey, I've got their back. They've got my back. Like, um, we all have blind spots, right? If, um, you know, that's, you can't see them. because That's why they call them blind spots, right? So you don't know you have them. I don't know I have them. We need people walking in our life that tr with, with a trust level enough to say, hey, um, I think there's some things in your life here in this area that could be shored up. Or, hey, I would love to encourage you with this scripture or text because I know you're, you're struggling with this or, or, or whatever, right? That, that we are able to protect one another from the evil one that wants to destroy all of us. It's not an attack on you. It's how can we fight the evil one better? That's the beauty of the, the church. We come together, and instead of trying to be a one-man army, we can stand shoulder to shoulder, uh, encouraging one another to fight the spiritual battle at hand. That, that's what the local church allows us to do. So that, in a nutshell, is why church membership is important. I think it's biblically implied. I think that it's... Um, uh, you know, super encouraging and needed for you. I think it's needed for the church. I think it's needed for the pastors and shepherds of a church to know who is in their care. Uh, now, specifically for Gospel City Church, how do we become a member of Gospel City Church? Well, uh, there are requirements to be a part of. And this isn't for every church. Maybe different churches have different things. I think these, you know, I'm not giving you a list of things that I think every church needs to do or should do. But I think these things are important uh, and I think you see them biblically to know who's a, who, who should be allowed to be a part or a member of a church. First thing is salvation, right? I think you need to be saved to be a member of a church. Um, you know, this is not a country club, right? This is not a gym membership. This is, uh, have you trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, right? We, we, we talked about, we've talked about often 
the gospel, we know this is the name of our church, Gospel City Church. Have you trusted in the good news of Jesus Christ? The, the news that you were lost, dead in your sins and trespasses. You came into the world far from God, and, and God, in his great mercy, saved you, opened your eyes, brought you to himself, and, 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 and Christ went to the cross, took your sin on the cross, and paid the price that your sins deserved. And not only did he pay the price and free you from the, sin, the, the, the wrath of God that you should have gotten, he also gave to you his own righteousness. And so we get our sins absolved and the righteousness of Christ imputed to us. That allows us entrance into heaven. God looks at us. He sees the absence of sin because Jesus paid for it. The, the penalty has been paid. And he sees the righteousness of Christ covering us that allows us entrance into his presence forever. Uh, those in the, the church or what is called the bride of Christ, the church is called the bride of Christ, are those who have trusted in Jesus, the bridegroom, to have done just those things. We, we, we believe that we, he took our sins. We believe that he went to the cross uh, and died the death that we should have died. We believe that he lived the perfect life, completely pleasing to the Father. We believe that he was put in a tomb. We believe that three days later, he rose again from that grave, defeating death with finality, and he's sitting at the right hand of the Father, awaiting the day to, f- to come again. Like We, we believe these things, and that's, that's what makes up the church, a, a group of people with the common belief that Jesus is Lord, and and that Jesus has saved sinners. That's, that's what we believe. That's what we hold to. So to, to not believe that and to be a member of a church is crazy, right? I mean, why would you, why would you do that, right? And so, so, so to, to be a member of the church, you, you subscribe to those things. You believe those things. God has opened your eyes to be able to see those things and to hold fast to them. We also uh, believe in baptism, that it's a, a sacrament of, of, the, of the church. Um, you see it in Acts 2.41, those who received his word were baptized. And there were added that day 3,000 souls. Every time you see in the scriptures someone come to Christ, you see them be baptized. I think it's a, it, 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 let me be clear, baptism does not save you. It is the testimony that you have been saved by Christ. Uh, and so when you are baptized, you are, you are identifying with the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. It's also symbolizing the death of your old self, your sin nature, and raised to walk in new life. This is what salvation is. It is a death to your old, your old creation. Now you are a new creation. You walk as, as made new, you know, and that's, that's what baptism does. It is symbolic of that. It, is, it also identifies us with the faith. Now, this would have been easier for the early church to, to realize because being baptized to them cost them something. Right. I mean, they would have been cut off from a lot of their community. They would have been cut off from commerce. They may have been fired from jobs. Being baptized and identifying was especially for those living in Jerusalem would have said, hey, we we we're following Christ now. And they would have been, you know, ostracized in a lot of ways in their community. For us, it doesn't I mean, there's not a lot of cost to you. Right. Um, So we don't understand the the identifying nature of it. But for them to be baptized was to say, I'm not turning back, and it's going to cost me everything, but I'm still going to do it because Jesus has saved me, and I'm his, and I'm going to identify with him both now and forever. And so uh, we believe that baptism is the symbol that you are, in, in fact, uh, been saved, and you, uh, you take that sacrament as uh, you know, a symbol of being saved, and we, we believe that to be significant to be a part of, of a body that we've all Identify with Christ through baptism, as the Scripture commands us to do. Uh, then we have some particulars um, that we think are helpful as Gospel City Church. One of those things is a membership class. We'll do that in the future, but, but essentially that's what we're doing here in these three weeks. Uh, in, in a lot of ways, we're doing actually more of an extended than I would probably normally do. Usually I'd probably do it in about an hour. Some of you have done that with me before, uh, but... Uh, but, 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 but a membership class so that because I, I firmly believe in you knowing what you're getting into before you sign up for something, right? This isn't, you know, like AT&T where you go and they say, hey, you sign this contract and you're like, I'm not reading that, 
right? No, we, we want to come and say, hey, this is who we are. We don't want you to say, yes, I want to be a member. And then six months down the road, you're like, I didn't know we'd believe that. Or I didn't know we did that, right? So uh, we are a very like, um, transparent community. Like, here's who we are. Here's what you're getting yourself into. Uh, because I think that, that keeps the, you know, um, the church healthy. I think it shuts the back door too. So you, again, so you don't get in and say, I didn't know I was getting into this. But the membership class helps us do that. Helps us describe you know, all the things I've done today, all the things I'll do in the next two weeks. Uh, but that, that's what a membership class does. Uh, we also, um, basically, uh, you, you would submit an application that you want to be a part of this. Uh, body, and, and you would have a, an elder interview. An elder interview is not where uh, you are grilled t- to know, you know, 52 catechisms and to see uh, where you are, how many scriptures you have memorized, and, uh, you know, to see, you know, we'll test, like, like, like you check your oil in your car, how much Holy Spirit do you have in your life. Um, we're not doing that. Essentially, it's just for you, again, to be known. So you would come, if you were meeting with me, uh, you would come and just tell me, how did you come to Christ? What's your story? How did you find yourself here? Did you grow up here? Did, you know, like, tell me about your walk with Christ now. Like, what, what's, what's going well? What's not going well? Uh, a time for you to know whoever is interviewing you. So, so again, to start that relationship um, being known. So, so that you can be known and be cared for in a way that is good for you and your family and good, good for the church. And, and, um, and, and then obviously we, we have, uh, um, you know, we have a statement of faith. We have doctrinal statements. And, and a part of being a part of that is you, you want to know those to, to know, hey, what am, I, what am I getting into again? You know, you say, I don't know what kind of church this was. Of course, you know, you come into a church named Gospel City Church. You know, we don't have a denominational alliance. We don't have a denomination in our name. A lot of times you can know a lot about a church before you walk into it based on its denominational alliance, right? You can say, okay, if it's a Baptist church, I know it's going to be like this. Or if it's a Presbyterian church, I can assume some of these things are going to be like this, right? Um, But for us, we want to be clear, hey, here are the things we hold to, here are the things we believe. Um, do you affirm those things? Are you on board with those things? Do you, are, you, are you good with those things? And, and we're going to teach these things. Is that, is that good for you and with you? And, and uh, all those kinds of things. So that's what, that's what membership like that would be like. Uh, in essence, the importance of membership and the beauty of it is so that we can begin now building a community that looks like our forever community. Right? We're going to die. We're all going to, unless the Lord comes back, we're all going to die one day. And we're going to be with, in the presence of the Lord. We sang about that today and what that's going to look like. A, a beautiful community. No sin. Um, you know, n- no, no, no envy. N- no bitterness. No, no you know, whatever. N- none of those things. We're going to be rid of sin. We're going to be worshiping Christ fully and, and, and uh, unhindered. And, uh, you know, and, and all those things. That's the community we're going to be a part of. What the local church is designed to do is to begin to, to foster a community that starts to look like that community now. Now, we're not going to get there perfectly, right? There's no perfect churches, and if you find one, don't, don't join it because you'll mess it up, right? Uh, there's no perfect church, but, but we're growing towards having a community that looks like a heavenly community. So we want to fight for those things now, right? We want to fight to love one another, not have envy, to encourage one another, to worship Christ unhindered, to worship him fully, to, to, um, to be rid of sin, to, to get sin out of our, out of our lives. And, you know, you know, we want to have that kind of community now. So that's the beauty of what a local body comes to do. And again, to reemphasize, you can't do that sitting in your pajamas watching YouTube. You can't see your blind spots. I mean, you just, you, you, you know, so we come together to be known and, 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 to, and to know one another. We come together to know Christ and to know him more in our lives. So that's, that's why we come together in, in membership. That's what the church, uh, local church, is supposed to do, supposed to be, to be a, a group of people that have one another's backs and continue to fight for the things that actually matter, right? Not, not over the color of carpets, Praise God, we don't get to pick that here. Um, but to, to fight over the things that matter, man, we want, we want to continue to push back the gates of hell and, uh, and, and to advance the mission of Christ in the world. That's what we want to do. So 
With that in mind, I'm going to pray and ask uh, the Lord just to continue to move in in our hearts and lives, and and, and we're going to sing one more song together. Let's pray together. Father, we love you, and um, just so thankful for the local church. And um, Father, you 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 know me, and you you know uh, just uh, even even. Preaching this this morning, you know, it's just a it's just a be- beautiful thing to be a part of a, a body. I, we love we love the church, and uh, not necessarily you know a particular church, just the church. We love the the big C local church. We we love that you're saving people. We love that from the all corners of the world, you're drawing people to Christ. We we love that we're part of a family. That when we get around the throne, we're going to look like. Uh, just a, a melting pot of people praising God forever. We love, we love, love, love that God. And we also love the local church, the expression of the body in a group of people together that we learn how to love one another. We love how to encourage one another. We love how to rebuke one another in a loving way. We, we, we learn how to help one another walk towards Christ. That's the beauty of the local gathering. We pray, God, that you would just continue to give us that here. We pray for a healthy church. I pray for the generations to come. I pray, God, uh, that because of the work you're doing now, you, you, would, you would just continue to purify us, to make sanctify us, make us more like Jesus, and use us to help us. <laughs> I pray that you would uh, let us to, to submit to those things of scriptures to, to encourage one another as the day, all the more as the day approaches, to, to, to pray for one another, to bear one another's burdens. I pray we do that. I pray we're a church that does that. And Lord, as we're Again, still Gospel City, we're learning how to crawl here. I pray that you would just continue to help us build on healthy blocks. Uh, we, want a, we want a firm foundation. We, we, want, a, we want a healthy foundation. Because ultimately, we want a, a church that honors Christ, not just today, but until you come back. That's our prayer. That we would be able to withstand... Um, the attacks of the evil one would be able to, uh, you know, withstand any kind of persecution or tribulation or hard times because of the beautiful community that you're developing. Make it, make here look like heaven. <laughs> make this community be a little taste of what our forever community will be like when we will be fully known <laughs> and fully loved. So, Father, would you help us to accomplish those things now? Lord, we love you. Thankful for your grace and goodness. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.